And we're back, guys. Welcome to Tennis in a Minute. I'm your host, Good Energy. Now, look, I said before, I really hate to discuss politics on the channel, but it's you can't have it's very tough to avoid nowadays. Look, Sharenko, Ukrainian player, age 33. Now, she's ranked 95th on tour. We've seen her as high as look, rank inside the top 30, but um she withdrew she's having a great season she's 18 and 4 on the year she's already nearly past as many wins as she had all of last year but she withdrew in the third round after wins over Lin Zhu and Donna Vekic Donna Vekic was a huge win she dominated her in that first set in Mexico Monterey look I think she could have beat Sabalenka but she withdrew she withdrew from that match uh due to political reasons she said look she she doesn't want to face Sabalenka. Uh, and of course, that's due to the ongoing situation between Ukraine and Russia. Now, let's get into the story, guys. Uh, when she spoke to WTA official, she got off the phone and she said she had a panic attack. Uh, the WTA official, um, you guys can read the story, right? Um, WTA CEO, he essentially said the Russian players have the right to back their country. And she said it instantly gave her panic attack. And she definitely she, she's like, look, I'm going to withdraw. Now, she was set to face Abilenka in the third round. I think that would have been a good match. Um, but we recently saw Marta take the championship in Texas and literally avoid a handshake with Vavara. Uh, she did the same thing with Victoria Azarenka. Um, it seems to me that. And listen, guys, um, everyone's entitled to their own personal opinion. Um, but it definitely seems to me that the Ukrainian players are literally showing more um, personal feelings about the situation going on overseas when it comes to these matches than the, than the Russian players, uh, without a doubt. Um, you know, uh, Elena Svetlana, she is she's been on one you know on her social media account she is just letting it all out um now Serenko's coach also uh took to social media he he blamed Sabalenka for the Ukraine situation um well let me let me clarify this statement because it's you know she's a tennis player uh, she's not a politician and let's be honest she doesn't have anything to do with this situation, right? Let's just be honest. But the reality here is Sabalenka made a statement that I, I think was uncalled for and I think was unprofessional. And I think this is why sometimes players just have to keep their mouth shut. Sabalenka made a statement in the past saying that she feels it's her fault for the situation. So, I mean, is his, is Vlasov, is his statement justified? Because Sabalenka, she's got a big egg on her face. Why would she say that previously? She feels like it's her fault. That's a little ridiculous. But nonetheless, she would go on to say, look, Aiden and Wells did nothing bad to Ukrainians. <sighs> look, Sabalenka, and this is the case with a lot of professional athletes. They spend most of their childhood years, time, minutes, hours training. They're not exactly scholars, right? They're not, let's just be honest. Professional athletes are not the most educated people. I mean, there's there's a few here and there that, you know, are very educated. They took their education, their scholarships, you know, they put it to good use. But a lot of professional athletes are not the brightest people. They spend their time mastering their craft. Sabalenka says some of the most ridiculous things, right? I don't think she's that great. And of course, English is a second language to her but i don't think any of her interviews are that great with her words um so a lot of the comments she says i don't really I, look i don't really take a lot of the things she says serious because i i just think she says a lot of foolish stuff here and there and she goes on to say who be, who would believe essentially you know this is how it should be worded who would believe a belarusian girl right and she says that because she says she's had a lot of um unjust things done to her as well that she can't talk about 
So it seems like in this statement, she's siding with the Ukrainian people saying, look, the country has also done some horrible things to me as well. And if you study history, you know, Belarus, they've had many issues with Russia, right? But of course, Russia has all the money and authority. So you're going to find a lot of Belarusian people that don't agree with the situation that's going on in Ukraine with Russia. Uh, but nonetheless, there's also a lot of propaganda on both sides. So which which side do you really take? I mean, I, look, 100 years from now, 100 years from now, don't be surprised if a report comes out that says both parties were involved with this to raise billions of dollars in war funds. I wouldn't be surprised. Why would you trust anyone nowadays, especially the media, especially politicians? War is profitable. War is very profitable. You know, so the reality here is, look, I say it all the time. The only thing that can conquer hate is love in a war, in a world full of hate. Be the one that shows love. And I personally. I think would be better if the players just took a love approach. I think the impact of them showing love and compassion and care for each other would have a bigger impact on all of the all of the young kids out there that are risking their lives for politicians, greedy politicians, right? Why else do you fight wars? For money. Let's be honest, for money. Why else do you fight wars? You you can agree over, you know, minute things, but to start a war, the cause is almost always for money. Let's just be honest. And uh, look, I, I do think the WTA CEO comments, I think they were a little bit out of line. I think he could have picked a better choice of words, especially with a situation that's so sensitive. You know, yes, the Russian players do have a right to support their country, but I haven't seen or heard if you guys have comment below. I haven't seen or heard any Russian player just flat out come out and say they're for this war. Take a look at Daniel Medvedev. I'm going to read his comments um, word for word. I definitely do feel sorry for all the Ukrainian players and what they go through. For sure, the situation with Serenko, I don't know in detail. It's more for her and for maybe a little bit Sabalenka to answer because I actually didn't know about this until the next day. Of course, we have a responsibility to talk about the issue, and it depends how every person, individual will do with it. I've always said the same. I'm for peace all over the world, and that's all I can say. And Victoria Azarenka has said that as well. They actually removed her from a, a, fun, a fundraiser to help support the cause. So listen, guys, all of the players that I've heard and seen, they've all said that they're for peace. So I would love to see the players on the court show more love and show more peace. Withdraw withdrawing from matches, look, that's their choice. That's their prerogative. But if they can hug, handshake, just show love, then look, I think that will have a bigger impact instead of fueling just hateful actions, just keeping the young, uninformed people that don't know. Look, let's be honest. We don't know what's going on in these boardroom meetings behind closed doors. We don't know. But we do know one thing. These countries are making billions of dollars for this situation, and that's unacceptable. I'm your host, Good Energy. Comment below. Keep it respectful. Keep it classy. And if you're from the Ukraine or Russia, if you guys can come together, show some love in the comments to end this situation, then that's a win.